Thank you very much to the organizers of this gathering, and I want to thank uh, Super. And I think it's really, really important that we are here together, and it's been so far very productive, and I have no doubt that by the evening it's going to be even more productive. So thank you very much for Super, and thank you for everyone who's driven to get here. So um, I also think it's really just very appropriate that this gathering is actually organized by students, uh, rather than, I mean, I, I love Ibrahim's comment that usually we walk into circles where there's so much gray hair. It's like, it's wonderful to see the young people. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's really, I'm, and also I'm going to tell you why it's important that this is organized by students. But since I happen to be a teacher, I'm going to begin with a question and I do want to address it to the people with not a whole lot of gray hair. And it has to do with the history of the movement because it's a movement modeled upon the South African anti-apartheid struggle. So I want to ask the students and the students of the movement, what decade do you associate with the anti-apartheid global boycott movement? The decade, 80s. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, all right. So 80s actually is correct. 80s is the decade that most people do associate with the uh, South African anti-apartheid movement. And it, 80s is when basically most of the people around the world were activating, were organizing, were engaging in boycott to end South Africa's apartheid. And yet the actual call for BDS, the actual call for a boycott, a global boycott movement to end South African apartheid did not come out in the 80s, it did not come out in the 70s, it did not come out in the 60s, it came out in 1959, in the 50s. So uh, between 1959 and, 19, and the 1980s, the South Africans were building the movement, which is what we are doing here. They were educating people, they're educating people about the reality of apartheid and about the proposed solution. It took that much groundwork. They did such a great job between 59 and the 80s that by the 80s, people everywhere around the globe knew about the struggle of the South Africans and boycott as a strategy had finally entered the mainstream consciousness. By the 80s, ignorance was no longer an excuse. It was not even an option. People knew by then, by the 80s, the, the inhumanity of South Africa's apartheid system, and they knew that participating in the global boycott of South Africa was what they, each and every individual, anywhere in the world, whatever their means, could do to put an end to this crime against humanity. And it's important also to think that whatever your means, it doesn't take anything to engage in boycott. If anything, you're not spending money. You know, so there is nobody who says, I can't engage in boycott. Just don't buy an Israeli product. Don't buy a South African product. It is within every single person's means to engage in, product, in boycott. You know, there are levels, but at the basic minimal level, no one, but once that education is done, once the groundwork is done, all of that work of educating, then ignorance is no longer an excuse. Ignorance is not an option. And then people have to take sides, and they can't say, but I can't afford to engage in boycott, because boycott is everyone's means. From 1959 to the 80s does seem like a long time, but you also have to realize that things are going to be faster for us, because there was no internet in the 60s, there was no email, there was no cell phones, no Facebook, no Twitter. <laughs> the South African students in England, they was it was started by South African students in England, they were actually exiled. The students who launched the boycott actually congratulated themselves on their use of the latest technology. They were absolutely thrilled with what they considered a media coup. That's, I mean, they were, fa they were like so happy about it. And that was a super accomplishment. And what they had done as far as their use of the latest technology is they had projected with a projector, one of those big bulky things like that, on the walls of the South African embassy in London, they projected an image of Nelson Mandela. That's as close to Skyping as they got. <laughs> you know, an image of Mandela. So they were using the technology that was available to them. 
They knew that there was some use to that. They, I mean, Judith, okay, you, you remember that. It was such an image. You know, I mean, today now, someone said that they were at the USSF. We Skype people in now. That was their way of Skyping. And it was also, and they, you know, every rally, every protest, there would be this image of Nelson Mandela, and that was um, their idea. So, so we do have different technological gadgets available today, which is why our process is faster. And it's so much faster, and if we have a different technology, we also have the role model. We are not, I always like to say, we are not inventing the wheel. We are borrowing a wheel that the South Africans invented. Let's give credits to the South Africans. They are the ones who established boycott as a global strategy, and they are, to this day, our advisors. The BNC has on its advisory board members of the South African boycott campaign of the 50s and 60s and 70s. So we have a different technology today, which is why our process is faster. And historians of social movements, when they compare South Africa to Palestine, estimate that between 2005, which is when the Palestinian call for BDS came out, and 2010, today, what we have achieved in those five years from 2005 to 2010 is basically what the South Africans had achieved from 1959 to the 80s. We have now entered mainstream consciousness. We are now at a stage where people in the streets have heard about BDS. Not everyone, and there's still a lot of work to be done, and there's still a lot of education to be done, but you know what? People everywhere are like, it's, it's there, it's on the surface, there's little bubbles. It's, it's, we're, we've made that important ripple that is like just emanating in circles. People know about BDS. As I said, not, in, not everyone. And it's not like the work was finished in the 80s. You know, the 80s is when it entered mainstream consciousness. And there was another 14 years to go because apartheid was not officially abolished until 1994. So entering the mainstream consciousness. Again, as historians of social movements look at the stages of a movement, when it's just an idea in someone's mind, when the idea is put out there, when the idea catches on, when the idea becomes, you know, common knowledge, when, you know, in the 80s, whether you were pro or against boycott, you knew about apartheid in South Africa. So there's our move, moments in history, and the social move, moment historians look at that, and so we see that what they had achieved by the 80s, we have now achieved. So between 1980, when BDS entered the global mainstream, the mainstream consciousness, and 1994, when apartheid was officially abolished, the South Africans didn't just sit and watch projections of Mandela on the walls of the South Africa House. That's what it was called. It's the Embassy of South Africa in London. It's called the South, it was actually called the Africa House. So between 1980 and 1980, that's not all they did. That's when the hard work was taking place also. So we're looking at a stage in our own history where by now, this is where the hard work begins too. And what we were talking about this morning and what we're gonna be talking about after this is the hard work that needs to be done because entering mainstream consciousness is one stage and that's in some ways, I don't want to say that's where the work begins because a lot of the work has happened just as between 59 and 1980s they were not just watching pictures of Mandela. But there's work to be done. And there's going to be a lot of very, very difficult times because now that it is in mainstream consciousness, as we talked about this morning, also that's when the attacks are taking place. <laughs>